Hi knitters, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I am your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry, Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, makers, designers um, that I talk about and remember to actually link. Yes, I will have them in the description below. If uh, you don't hear me mention, or if you hear me mention it, but you don't see the link, like please feel free to comment or DM me on Instagram and I will try to fix that. Um, yes, so I'm so excited to be back. Like I said, I'm trying to get back in the rhythm of things. Um, I am very, very happy to report that my knitting mojo has returned with a vengeance. I have been frantically knitting trying to catch up. I don't think I'm going to catch up with everything that I committed to because like losing three weeks, even if I feel great, I can't make up for all that time and that's okay. That's okay. I'm trying to be patient with myself. I'm going to make things right with the designers. I'll figure it out. I'll do it. But yes, I'm feeling better. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the reason I got out of the knitting slump, it really was, like I said, finishing a small thing, it helps. Um, I didn't cast on the hat yet. Actually, the yarn hasn't come in. Um, but what I did do was I finally finished the ribbing on my year-round popover. Again, this is the crop sweater coming out from Homebody Fibers. And I used, for the size large, even with longer body, I ended up using less than three skeins of DK weight or worsted weight, pardon me, worsted weight, three skeins. Um, and that was for size large. So if you have two, three skeins lying around, maybe four, if you're going to do a plus size thing, like it's a great project. Um, I realized suddenly that the lighting changed. So if you saw like a flash, um, sorry, it's because the sun is going down. It's really hard to record in winter time. Ah, that's a shame because I think it meets the color of my sweater. This is Goldwing, by the way. Goldwing by Jen Steinglass. Um, I knit this in Madeline Tosh uh, vintage. Not vintage? It's not vintage. Madeline Tosh, whatever. I'll, it's on my Ravelry. Um, I knit it last year. This was actually the 20th sweater I knit in the year 2020. Um, I, I just got like the, uh, you know, this time last year thing on Facebook. So it was kind of nice to see. I've come really far in terms of knitting um, just in the last year and that's really fantastic yeah so having this done really helped my knitting mojo sometimes finishing something can be the spark you need um, and speaking of spark um, my experience with this and also my goals for this year you know this year is winding down so I've been thinking a lot about what my goals are for next year because um, I'm not sure if I actually vocalized it to you guys, but my private goal to myself was that because I knit 23 sweaters in the year 2020, my private goal to myself was 30. And I believe I'm about to hit that. In the next few weeks, I will hit two extra sweaters. I'm at 28 right now. So if I hit two extra sweaters, I'll hit 30. And um, that's awesome. You know, making my dreams happen, that's great. Um, but I've also been thinking a lot about making mindfully because I clearly, you know, life happens to every one of us, but I think I tend to fluctuate uh, very much depending on my mood and that a lot of it is to do with my bipolar disorder. Um, but anyway, like what does it mean to make mindfully? I'm not actually sure because I've never done it before. I've, I've always been prone to whimsy and impulse. Um, so I like the idea of making uh, plans, like really hard plans rather than the whole willy-nilly thing that I do. Um, because sometimes it gets exhausting and sometimes like last month I'm left wondering like, oh my god, like what do I even do at this point? So I have so many whips. Uh, on needles like I'm out of interchangeable cords like and I that's like the one thing I consistently buy at my local yarn shop I always buy those lucky cords for my interchangeables and then I buy tips because I'm out of you know whatever size tips I have no idea how many cords and tips I have because they're all just spread out and on projects so I know some people like leave them on just the cords or they'll leave them on waste yarn. I'm not like that. I'm dumb and I just keep buying more tips and cords. Anyway, 
So yeah, I think it would be a really fun thing for me if I just made it my goal next year to finish things I've started at various points and haven't finished. Um, I'm, I haven't finalized that yet. I'm just, I'm thinking about it. You know, it's almost the end of the year, so I'm still mulling it over, but I, um, I like the idea of starting over with a, at least a, as close to clean slate as possible. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that idea. I'm just gonna like brighten it up a little bit because it's really dark. Um, don't mind me. Yes, okay, yeah, that's a little better, yeah. Um, I did wanna talk about my, one of my followers and viewers is Marie and the Stars. Marie, uh, she reached out to me because you guys remember I showed you this pink yarn from Wandering Flock. I'm gonna start a project with it and I was talking about how hard it is to find a pink mohair that's light enough to pair with this, right? Because I don't wanna detract from the beautiful blues and purple swirls and speckles. And Marie reached out because she was de-stashing and found this cone of mohair. Um, and if you guys know how cones work, this is a, this is probably two sweater quantity for me, um, at least if I'm gonna hold it single. Um, she was de she found this, and she thought it would be a great match, and Marie, you are absolutely right, it's a perfect match. Perfect match. I couldn't even make this up. Um, yeah, so she was de she called a price, to, and I thought it was completely reasonable, sent her the money immediately, um, and she got the yarn to me, and it's perfect. I'm so excited because I, before she reached out, I was really, I looked so hard. I spent so many hours searching, and I couldn't find anything that was a great match. Um, and here we are. Thank you so much. So, like, my viewers are amazing, and y'all are amazing. And I'm so glad that I could help you v stash, and you could help me find the perfect match. Um, and because Marie is amazing, uh, she also, she makes stitch markers. She has an Etsy, but it's currently on break. I'm not sure if you're planning on coming back, but you absolutely should because look how pretty these stitch markers are. It's for a smaller gauge needle, and that's totally fine. I do small gauge stuff too sometimes. Um, but like, you see how pretty they are? They're like little flowers. I thought it was so gorgeous, and um, I really do hope you c open your shop back up because I would love to buy like actual sets. She just included this as a gift, and that's so sweet. Um, yeah, I just, I feel very lucky and blessed um, for many, many reasons. Yeah, um, I, I wonder whether or not I should talk about this because I talk about my mom a lot, but <laughs> I talked about it on my Instagram, so I feel like for those of you not on Instagram, I should let you know. Um, I have a very good friend, Keith. Uh, he and I used to practice yoga every day together. Every day for a year, uh, we practiced yoga together and we would like go out to eat afterwards and he was just like, he was so much personality. But uh, he died very, very unexpectedly. And it kind of like knocked the wind out of me because here I am, like my life is going so well and I've been so happy these days. Um, and then suddenly he's gone. And if you had asked me two years ago, if you had asked me who are the least likely people to ever be gone, I absolutely without a doubt would have said my mom and Keith because both of them to me were the people who really embodied that lust for life. Like they were so loud and so colorful and vibrant. Like I know everybody says like, oh, they burnt out too quick, whatever. Like these, people really embodied everything that I think of when I think of a love of living and for them to both leave, for them to both be gone, it was just kind of like, and I know I intellectually, I know anybody can go at any time, but like for the people that I least thought likely, it was kind of um, shocking, you know, shocking, yeah. Um, but I'm still here and I'm healthy. And like I said, I other than losing them, I am happy. Um, so I'm going to keep making and keep sharing with you guys because it makes me happy and I hope it makes you happy. At least 
some of most of you tell me it makes you happy so that makes me happy too is i'm just I want to share as much as I can and if nobody watches that's fine I'm just talking to the ether the void whatever but if it makes one person happy to see my videos and talk about knitting then I'll do it whatever for one person um so yeah I just I'm gonna try to live a little louder a little bit more colorful um in honor of the people that I lost that don't get to share that anymore um speaking of color so <laughs> I shared my whip the other yesterday. Um, I went to the park, did it with my friend Megan. It was lovely and we had a great time. And I shared this whip because I was really excited about it. This is the Varro Pullover by Sari Nordland. It has a folded over neckband, very neat. Um, color work yoke, obviously. It's pretty It's pretty intense color work, but um, I have to steam block this, by the way. It's, it's too small right now, but I have to steam block it. But yeah, so now I've reached a sock in it body and I'm finally just like chugging it away at it. It's it's great. But like some people were kind of upset about like the fact that this isn't my quote unquote normal palette. Um, and I'm not naming names or anything. Like some people like messaged me even. They were like, why are you working with green yarn? And like that was so weird to me because I can use other colors besides pink and white you guys like like look at this gold wing i made it last year it's orange okay um also i used dark green before you guys i wore this in an episode i wore my zweig zweig by caitlin hunter slash boylan networks like this is dark green okay and i look great in dark green um there's certain dark greens. I look good in certain dark greens. And that's why I don't have more of it because it's very hard for me to match with my skin tone. Um, but this one I have, I also have the Wardwell sweater, Wardwell sweater by uh, Jensen, or not Jensen, pardon me, by uh, Rachel Jensen. No, oh my God, I'm gonna link her. I'm so sorry, my brain is fried. Rachel, it's by Rachel Reese. Rachel Reese, Rachel Reese. Nah. See, this is what I wish I could edit because then I could just like casually act like I didn't forget my friend's name, Rachel Reese, who is a dear friend and who reaches out to me um, just to make sure I'm okay, which is super sweet. But yes, Rachel Reese, this is the Wardwell sweater. And I tested this for her probably like three years ago. Yeah, and it's dark green. I wear dark green. So like I, it was just, I was taken aback. Um, and I know sometimes when people see, like people create an image of you and something counters that image, it can be kind of uh, shocking for people. And I think that's what it is. Like people think of me as pastel and rainbows. So when they see me do like a deep dark color, they're like, what's going on? And I think that was it. But like, I, I promise I have used deep dark colors before and I will continue to use them. Yes, I love pinks and pastels and white speckles. Like, God, you guys know I do. Um, but <laughs> I can also use other things is what I'm trying to say. Um, please don't be mad. <laughs> like, please don't get upset. I, I know it. Yeah, I, I like all colors. I like colors, except for I don't like purple and brown. Purple and brown, are, those are my only ones. But yes, I use many colors is what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so again, borrow pullover. It's, the testnet deadline is coming up very soon. I'm hoping to finish it in time now that I finally have my groove back, maybe. Um, speaking of deadlines coming up soon, <laughs> this is the status of my Amara. Um, I've done separation. This is the front almost done. I just have to do the shoulder and then the sleeves, but because it's brioche, I. I, I actually think brioche works really quickly. I know some people think it takes forever. I don't know, for me, it feels very rhythmic. So I feel good about it. And um, I know that once I actually pick up for the sleeves, it'll go really quick. Then it's just the collar. And I feel like if I push myself, I'll be able to do it. Fingers crossed. Yes. So I'm really excited about this. Now that I finally have reached the point where it I see the finish line like I have no excuse I I went through spurts in this project um I would work on it for a couple days and then just stop for way too long and um 
I think it was just a mental block because I knew that this required some actual like keeping track of things like the cables they they occur at different intervals so like you have to actually like look and count and think and there were uh, the last month I wasn't in that space where I wanted to think pretty much at all so I didn't work on it and that's my fault um, but hopefully no I will I'm determined to finish this because this yarn combo, you know, exploring its and wandering flock, people would love to work with this. Like, and I love to work with it. So it would be rude. It would be a real, you know, loser move of me to not finish this gorgeous project um, because it is stunning. Every sample that I've seen knit up, like every test knitters version, it's so gorgeous. My friend Megan, um, Kimchi and Co, she did a white version and it's, I want a white one now. Like. It's just a mental block and I know I'm gonna push through it, but it's a great pattern. I'm so excited for it to come out. I'm so excited for me to finish this and for me to show you guys because it really is just stunning. Yes, it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> Do you like the up and down motion? I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> also, I showed you guys just like a little tiny section of this when it was so this is the Asteria, so you can't really see it now because it's all crunched up. Let me, so I joined the front and back and it's gonna have these like ridges. Obviously on the inside, it looks like this. This is the wrong side, this is the right side. And uh, the deadline on this is coming up soon. You, it's really hard to show you because when I just hold it up to show you the length, it looks too small for me. Like this looks really small, right? Um, yeah, it starts bottom up, obviously. I'm actually close to sleeve separation and then I'll work it flat because it's bottom up and then do the shoulders. Anyway, it's going a lot quicker than I expected. I've been working on this a lot. Uh, the yarn is one that my Patreons voted for. Um, this one is Fall Year Round by The Kinetic Knitter. And I really, really love the way it's working up. See the detail there? It's the perfect autumnal shade and I think that's why it was so popular at the time because I did put the poll in autumn, you know, the heyday of autumn. So that's why it won. And I do promise you guys I'm working on it. I'm really trying to bust my butt, trying to catch up, but it's really hard when you lost three weeks of your time just to, you know, whatever. But I promise I'm working on stuff. I'm catching up. Um, while I talk for the rest of the episode, I'm actually going to knit because like I said, I'm, I'm trying to catch up, you guys, you know, please understand. And I think some people like, like when I knit and talk because it's like we're just friends just chatting and that's the vibe I like. Um, and speaking of chatting, I, I try to keep this podcast limited to just the knitting talk, but I did want to share one small snippet of my personal life, which does relate to knitting. So that's my, that's my justification. It does relate to knitting and it is personal life. And I kind of debated whether or not I wanted to share this because the last, okay. So when Ken and I broke up, I shared it with my followers on Instagram because I consider like my relationship with my followers like friends um i i don't i try not to hide stuff from you guys i consider myself kind of an open book so of course i shared it because it was something important to me important happening in my life um i didn't expect a few people to like actually message him like they a few people i i don't know who exactly i didn't ask him the handles or anything but a few people like messaged him on instagram half of them were nice and supportive and said you know that they wish him well and that you know they wish both of us healing which was really nice that's very sweet it was still a little weird um but the other half were apparently like mean and they said mean things to him and i don't like either option because like he was part of my personal life but he's not part of my instagram page he's never showed up in any of my videos so it like it felt Kind of weird to me um so that's why i i debated whether or not to bring this up but you guys remember i i talked about that i'm i'm going on dates now um i yeah and everything is super casual right now you know i've just i really just started to date um the one of the people that i'm seeing is a individual whose mother 
um, incidentally, is a knitter. Um, so I don't know her name, uh, but she lives in upstate New York and is a knitter and goes to Rhinebeck every year, which sounds lovely. I've never been to Rhinebeck. I would love to go. Um, but yeah, so if you live in upstate New York and you have a 30 something year old son named Matt with red hair, I just want you to know that you've raised a proper gentleman. He's very respectful. Um, he's a nice young man. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Yeah, uh, apparently she knit him, she knit him a sweater once and it took about a month and a half, uh, according to him. So he, he appreciates that, um, what a investment it is to knit sweaters. And that, it, it was kind of nice to be able to talk about like my passion, which is knitting, um, and to have someone at least have some semblance of any idea of what that entails. So that it was just, I thought it was funny. Um, yeah, small world, small knitting world. Um, yeah, he's a gentleman though. So if you are out there, <laughs> somehow you hear about this, yeah. Um, yeah, just, just a little snippet of my personal life that I wanted to share. Um, I haven't been buying a lot of yarn lately, you know, with my New York trip coming up at the end of this month and then Portland in February, I really am trying to be more conscientious about yarn. And you guys, you guys know I don't need more yarn. Um, I really don't. And I, it's fine. I finally internalized that. So I haven't been buying a lot. The stuff that I have bought have been presents. Um, that I'm giving to my friends and I obviously can't show them to you yet because if I show you guys They could see it because I know some of them Shanna <laughs> Some of them watch these videos. So that's why I'm not gonna show you yet I might re, -re I might record a video where I show you the presents that I got for my friends and then upload it after I give it to them because we have like we have a set day we have a set day that we're going to exchange gifts. So that's what I'm waiting for. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm happy even with all the stuff going on. I'm happy you guys, and I hope you are too. And if you are in a knitting slump, like I was a few weeks ago, that's totally okay. It's totally okay. Even, even if you made commitments like I did, nobody's going to get hurt. Um, you can make things, there are ways to make things right if you let down a designer. It's okay. Don't be mean to yourself. Um, don't be mean to anybody. You know, that's, that's what I'm trying to do these days anyway. Um, I just, I love you guys. Thank you for being part of my creative life. I feel so grateful every day that I get to do this and share this with you. And I can't wait to show you guys more stuff that I make and um, hopefully progress that I make very soon. It's so nice to see you again and I will talk to you guys next time.